once again, it is a blessing and an honor to present to you uh, this week's Torah portion. And uh, we're in Torah portion number 41. That's uh, Numbers chapter 25, verses 10 through chapter 30, verse 1. And the title of this week's Torah portion is Phinehas. Phinehas. And so I'll read a first, the first few uh, verses of Numbers chapter 24. And then uh, from there, we'll continue. And it says, And the Lord, or Yahweh, spoke to Moses, saying, Phinehas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron the priest, has turned my wrath away from the children of Israel, while he was zealous for my sake among them. And I did not consume the children of Israel in my jealousy. Therefore, I say, behold, I am giving my covenant of peace to him. And he will have it and his seed after him. The covenant of an everlasting priesthood. Because he was zealous for his God and made atonement for the children of Israel. And so... Um, of course, you know, Phinehas is a very prominent figure that we see here. He has an entire Torah portion named after him. Um, he's a, in the lineage of Aaron. He's the grandnephew of Aaron. And he is blessed uh, with the covenant of Shalom because of his zeal for the Lord, right? He, he takes a righteous stand and makes an atoning sacrifice so to speak you know he by basically impelling a couple um, who were committing a sexually immoral act at a time that the Lord was already bringing judgment upon Israel you know because of their idolatry the fornication which led to idolatry with other nations and so one of the themes that I really want to cover here is that of atonement because when we look later on in the in the Torah portion when we get over to Numbers chapter 28 uh, we read about the offerings you know we read about the burnt offering and we also read about a sin offering being offered up and so um, this the sin offering deals with atonement right kapor um, in the Hebrew, which means to cover, but it also means to remit, to remove. So atonement in scripture deals with covering sin, but also removing sin, right? Removing guilt, removing the effects and power of sin. And so um, in Numbers chapter 28, verse 2, which is still part of this week's Torah lesson, I'm going to go there and read. And it says, and, and, and the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel and say to them, My offering, my food for my offerings made by fire, a sweet, a sweet savor to me, and you will observe to offer to me in their due season or in, in their appointed time. Okay, so they were daily burnt offerings that were to be offered up. Um, there was a daily burnt offering of two male lambs, one during the day and one during the evening. And we read about that in Numbers 28, verses 3 through 4. And it says, And you will say to them, This is the offering made by fire, which you will offer to the Lord. Two lambs of the first year without spot, day by day, for a continual burnt offering. Then you will offer one lamb in the morning, and you will offer the other lamb at the evening. And then even on Sabbath, on Shabbat, in, in verse 9 says, And on the Sabbath, two lambs of the first year without blemish, and two tenths of an ephah flour for a grain offering, mixed with oil and drink offering. This is the burnt offering of every Sabbath, besides the continual burnt offering and its drink offering right and then every new moon or rosh hadash the new the new moon which signified a new month it says and on your new moons you will offer a burnt offering to the lord two young bulls and one ram 
seven lambs of the first year without blemish, right? Without blemish. Um, and, and so uh, the new moon is also with the new moon, which is not included in the daily offerings or in the Sabbath offering is a sin offering. Okay. In Numbers 28, verse 15. And then we read, he says, and one male goat will be offered for a sin offering to the Lord or to Yahweh besides the continual burnt offering um, or in addition to the continual burnt offering. Two bulls, one ram, seven lambs, one year old without defect, and one male goat as a sin offering to the Lord. And so the same thing, this 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 same continual sacrifices of the lambs, as well as sin offering is presented for the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks or Pentecost, the Feast of Trumpets, of course, the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, and each day of the seven-day festival of, of tabernacles, as well as the eighth day of tabernacles. You know, there were seven days, but then there was that special eighth day mentioned in Torah. It's almost like a mini celebration within itself attached to the festival of tabernacles. It's seven days, but then there's this eighth day, right? And there was to be a holy convocation on that day. Now, I, you know, what, what stood out to me is that when you look at lambs, okay, the lambs are the burnt offering offered day by day, one in the morning, one in the evening, a sweet smelling fragrance, a sweet offering unto the Lord. It smells sweet to the Lord. And then we see the offering of a goat only on special, special um, holidays or holy days. You know, this is not offered on a regular Sabbath. Um, and that's for the atonement of sin, right? That's the sin offering. And you see that mentioned over in, um, you know, the, the various festivals, the major festivals and during the new moon. And so what is significant about lambs or sheep and goats? You know, we know that in scripture, lambs and sheep are metaphors used to des describe the disciples of Yeshua, the you know, God's covenant people, you know, those who follow him, who follow the lamb. They're called lambs. He says, you know, behold, I send you out as lambs amongst wolves, right? And then also when we read over in Matthew 25, of course, we read about the parable of the goats and the lambs that at the end of time the lord was the, the the shepherd yeshua is going to separate out of his flock the lambs or the sheep from the goats right and so the sheep are those who inherit his kingdom and they're placed on his right hand the goats are those who wind up not inheriting the kingdom and it looks like they were together as one, you know, like they were all basically in this giant flock. But even while they were kind of like following a shepherd or in this flock, there's a distinction between, of course, sheep and goats. And at the end of the age, the Lord separates them. And, and there's two places of destiny for each one. And so when I think about the lamb, the, the, the lamb as a, as a burnt offering, I think about Romans chapter 12. Um, where the Bible says, I beseech you, because if you're a true disciple, right, your mind is stayed on the Lord. You know, he says, I'll keep you in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on me. And then we're exhorted over in Joshua to meditate on the Torah both day and night. Notice how the lamb's, lamb offering was offered both day and night, right? That's meditating on the Torah both day and night. That's what lambs do. That's what sheep do. That's what his people do, right? Um, Romans 12 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. 
and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And then, you know, those who offer themselves up at like that burnt offering as a sweet smelling aroma unto the Lord, those are people who essentially use the gifts that God has given them to bless uh, fellow members of the body with, as well as to serve humanity with. And that's why in the parable of the sheep and the goats, he tells the, the sheep, he says, you know, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was naked, you clothed me. He said, well, when did we do this? He said, when you did it to the least of these, you've done it unto me. These are people willing to use their gifts for the benefit of humanity, which the Lord himself, Yeshua, longs to redeem, right? The goats, um, so they, so the lambs want to serve each other and the world with their gifts, their, their spiritual gifts. The goat was, you know, it represents the sin offering for atonement. And goats are those in the kingdom who use the name of Yeshua and their spiritual gifts to serve themselves and not to serve others. Now think about it. The, the offering for the sin offering is represented with the goat, right? And Yeshua uses the illustration of goats as people kind of similar to his sheep, but not really his sheep, people who don't really want to obey his voice. Because the, to obey the voice of God, first of all, involves the, having a love for God and a love for people, right? And these goats only love themselves. They, they you know, they, they represent sin. It represents the flesh. It represents the selfish, carnal nature, which the Lord longs to crucify within us. And so he uses this as an illustration, as an atoning sacrifice for sin, because the goat nature is what he's trying to destroy at the cross, right? He wants to destroy in us a self-centered um, view of, of how we can serve God or how God can rather serve us, right? That's humanity's dilemma. That can be the dilemma of a lot of believers, you know? And so he uses the goat who's disinherited as an illustration, as the atoning sacrifice for sin, because why? Yeshua on the cross became sin for us. He became like that goat nature, right? That'll get you disinherited from the kingdom because his desire through his sacrifice is that we would be in right relationship with the Father. That's always been his desire. He he became sin. He became a curse for us. So we don't have to, so that we don't continue in sin, so that he could both cover our sin and remove sin from our lives. You know, he does not want us to end up like the goats, right? He said, I became a goat for you so that you could become one of my sheep so, so that you might want become one of my lambs. Um, let's see here. So I just want to leave that with you. You know, I know that typically when we look at the festivals, we normally go to Leviticus 23, but Numbers 27 and 28, which is right here in the Torah portion for Phinehas, uh, reviews to us the offerings, the sacrifices, right? And then in the day to the daily sacrifice, the the Shabbat sacrifice, and then the monthly and the 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 special season appointed time sacrifices, right? You know, at all times 
the Lord wants us as his sheep, as his body, to offer up that sweet aroma of sacrifice unto him, you know, uh, offering up our bodies as a living sacrifice, right? And the, atone, the, the, the atonement which came through the sin offering of the goat is to remind us that Yeshua became like that goat, that, that self-serving, you know, self-centered carnal man that he atoned for, right? To both cover our sin and to remove its effects and its influence from our lives. So may we all take up our cross. May we all lay down our lives one for another. May we all surrender all to him, offering our bodies up as a living sacrifice, both day and night, meditating on his Torah so that we might enter into his eternal inheritance and his promises. Well, I pray that this has been an insightful Torah session with you. I encourage you, read the entire Torah portion, read the readings, be lifted up in the Lord, be edified, and and, and, and most importantly, be blessed in Yeshua's name. God bless you and Shalom. Thank you.